Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to see an easy way to change the background color of a photo with Photoshop Elements. We'll go from this to this or to this. Let's go over to Elements and get started. I'm using Photoshop Elements 10 for this video. The first thing we need to do is make a selection of the background. I found that I got the most accurate selection the fastest by using a selection tool I don't usually get a very good result from, and that's the Magic Wand tool. But it did a really good job of recognizing the difference between the background and the desserts in this photo. So I went to the toolbox and clicked on the Magic Wand tool, which is right here. Then I went up to the Options bar and I set my tolerance to 18. The tolerance setting tells elements how many different shades of tone to include in the selection based on the spot where you click. Also make sure anti-alias is checked and that contiguous is checked. Contiguous tells elements that any pixels that are within the tolerance range that we set have to be touching each other from the spot where you click if you don't check contiguous, it will select similar pixels from anywhere in the photo, and some might be in the part of the photo that you don't want to be selected, in this case the desserts. So to select my background, I'll click once with the magic wand, and a group of pixels are selected as indicated by the marching ants. If I click on another area to include it in the selection, it won't add to my selection, it will replace the selection. After your first click, you have to hold down the shift key when you make additional clicks to add to your selection. I clicked once and now I'm going to hold down the shift key and you can see I get a little plus sign next to my cursor and I'll click again and I'll continue holding the shift key and click and click and again and again and just keep clicking around and I'm just going to keep clicking these areas that aren't selected yet. So here's a group and I'm just going to kind of go in the middle of them and click on there and here's some other stray ones here. And usually you can clean those up pretty good depending on your photo. And this little bit here and that and that. And now I can let go of the shift key. Now I have a pretty decent selection of the background of my photo. All you do to change the color is to go to the Layers panel. Let me bring that over. And click on the half light, half dark circle. And from the pop-up list, click on the first item, which is solid color. That does three main things. First, it brings up this new window, commonly referred to as the color picker. I'll move that over here a little closer. It also fills the selected area of our photo with whatever the foreground color is set to. When I talk about the foreground color, that's this black chip that's located right at the bottom of my toolbar. And the third thing it does is creates a new layer at the top of the layers panel, showing a thumbnail of our color on the left right here, and another thumbnail next to it which represents our layer mask. That layer mask is based on the area that we had selected. The Color Picker dialog window gives us the opportunity to choose whatever color we want our selected area to be. I'm going to choose a blue color. To do that, first I'll click on the blue part of the vertical color bar, and then I'll go to the big square area and click on a shade. So let me click uh, right here. And that's kind of a nice blue. After you choose a color you like, click OK. Now our selected area is filled with the color we chose and our area is deselected. That looks pretty good, but if you look closely at the edges, they're a little jagged, even though we had the anti-alias box checked in the options bar when we made our selection. I'll zoom up so you can see those edges better. See how they're not real smooth, they're kind of jagged and stair-stepped? We can fix that by blurring the edges of our layer mask. Just make sure you're on the layer you just created by clicking on it in the Layers panel. In other words, you don't want to be on your background layer. You want to click to make sure you're on this new layer that we just created. Then go up to the Filter menu and choose Blur 
and Gaussian blur. And that brings up this new dialog window. And it's pretty easy. There's just one adjustment option, which is it's the ra this radius slider, and it's in pixels. And if we slide it towards the right, our image gets more blurry. And as we slide it to the left, it gets less blurry. So what I want to do in this photo, I want to smooth out like along this edge right here and also over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly start to bring the slider over towards the right as I watch these jagged edges. And let me move that out of the way. You know, I'm going to look at all these jagged edges here and see if I can make it a little smoother. Right there, they're kind of blurry and it it kind of blends into that background better. Now if I go too far, I start getting that halo around around the objects and I don't want that. 0 0.5 looks pretty good for this image. Just a slight amount is all that it needed. The amount of Gaussian blur you apply will be determined by each individual photo. There's things like image resolution and the amount of contrast along the edge of an object and its background that come into play. So I'm going to click OK to accept that. Now we have replaced our background with a solid blue color. You can easily go in and change the color by double clicking anywhere on that layer except right on the layer mask. If I double click on the layer mask, nothing happens. But if I move off of the layer mask and double click, then it brings up the color picker again. And let's say I wanted to change the background color to green. I would just click on the vertical color strip and get in the green area and then can click around inside this big square to get the exact shade that I want. And then I would say OK and then I'd have a green background. I'm going to cancel out of that and I'm going to go back down to 100% view so we can see the whole photo. So we have the solid blue background. If I turn off the visibility of the new layer so we can see our original photo, which is unchanged underneath it, notice that the color is not only gray, but there are also these shadows and reflections, which we lost when we changed the color to solid blue. If you want to retain that detail after changing color, it's easy to do. I'll turn the visibility of our new layer on again by clicking to the left of the thumbnail. And if you go up to the top of the Layers panel, where it says Normal, and click, you'll see a long list of layer blend modes. These blend modes each tells elements for the active layer that's chosen how to interact with the layer right below it. If I want to see that detail from our original photo, I can go down towards the bottom of the list and choose the blend mode that's called Color. So right here. And I'll click on that. And when I do, we see all that detail come through, but we still retain the blue color. So it really depends on what effect you're after, either a solid background or one that retains the detail from the original photo. If you want a solid background, then you would just leave the blend mode at normal, which is the default. But to get this level of detail, you can just change it to color mode and then that detail will come through. And that's about all there is to it. Easily change the background color of a photo. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.